For easy identification, this is the stock carb on a DRZ 400 S or SM model. The E model has a different carburetor on it, which is a flat slide. This is a CV, continuous velocity carb. This is the diaphragm, which sits in the top of the carb. To give the best perspective here. The diaphragm sits in the top of the carb, up in there. It only goes in one way. The diaphragm is this rubber boot on top and it holds the needle primarily. There are a couple of air vent holes here and there's another air vent hole here. Those are, are designed to control the airflow into and out of the diaphragm area, which is actually uh, the, the air pocket beneath or, or above this metal here, but beneath the rubber. And what this does is it acts like a balloon. The carburetor has a, a from the air box, there's a hole in the front of the carburetor and that has an air passageway that lifts up and it blows air up into the diaphragm. And at idle, there's enough tension from the spring sitting here holding the diaphragm down that nothing happens. But as the RPMs increase, so does that airflow and it counteracts against that spring. So what happens is this inflates like a balloon and it lifts up. And as this lifts up, it lifts that needle, which pulls slowly out of the orifice tube. And you may be able to see it down in there. There's a small hole down at the bottom of the, of the slide. There, there's an, a hole, which is referred to as the orifice tube. And along that orifice tube, at the bottom of it, is going to be your main jet. In the case of this bike, we have a 150 main jet installed, which should be sufficient for the mods. Maybe 155 is, is required. Um, but the, the issue we're addressing today is that the bike has a, a heavy bog when you try to take off. It, it idles fine, it starts fine, so the primary jet appears, or the idle or primary jet, or whatever language you want to use, appears to be fine. But as soon as you try to take off a 16th or an 8th throttle, the bike immediately bogs. And it does so until you're about halfway on the throttle, which is a sufficient throttle opening in the front to allow enough vacuum to get enough air to really lift this up and get you know, considerably higher up on the needle. And then it runs well enough that the issue appears to be gone. Um, it's, it's a minor enough issue that it probably only needs one slight change on this slide. So what we're going to do is there's a a retainer here. We're going to pull that plug straight out and it doesn't turn or anything. I mean you can rotate it but it's not screwed in. It just comes straight out. You pull it out the uh, gentle you know pair of needle nose pliers and at the top of the needle are some grooves that a C-clip goes into and on those grooves um, oh, here let me just show you. Okay this is what was installed in your bike. There's the retainer at the top which actually goes this direction. Just a, a little a rubber o-ring which helps holds it into a couple of fingers down in the in the slide assembly there's a spring which pushes up against the retainer and on this c-clip on the top of the needle and that just helps make make sure the needle is pushed down uh you know and coming out of the hole the the full distance that it needs to be as you can see there are several grooves in the top of this needle and those grooves are are there to allow us to make jetting changes now this one is currently in the second position uh, but we need to make a significant change. This is jetted terribly wrong uh, for an entirely different altitude than we're at. The issue he here is that this is in setting number two. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. So you always number from the top down to the point of the needle. So it's in setting number two. We're going to go down all the way down to setting number six. Stock. Uh, the bike needs about a four. With the mods we have on it, it should be five, maybe even six. So we're going to jump down to number six. I know what it was running at with five earlier, and I've just moved it for demonstration purposes um, to indicate, you know, some of the changes you need to make because of altitude or things like that. So we'll change that. It, it pulls off simply and, and slides back on. You, you can probably do it by hand. Be careful not to bend the needle. The needle is very sensitive. Don't scratch it with anything. Don't rub it up against anything. I always like to get out a nice little blue cloth and uh, get everything to set on that nicely. Other identifying features of the carb you will find here. This is a uh, CV carb. It has a choke. It's actually a fuel enricher circuit, not a choke. We don't have choke carburetors anymore, but the fuel enricher circuit, often referred to as a carb, has two detent positions. You can hear it click. So closed, half open, full open. And you can just easily feel those settings out. 
Uh, and, and what that's really doing is just opening up another circuit in the carburetor, allowing a little more fuel in for easier starting. Usually, you know, you don't need to run it for more than a couple seconds, uh, especially in full choke, maybe on half on a really cold day. But this bike is operated primarily in summertime weather, so we're not going to have an issue there. This is your TPS, your throttle position sensor. While I'm on that note, there, there is a way of adjusting it. There's uh, a plug for it, which comes back up here. You can disconnect the plug. There are three wires to it, and uh, one wire sends a, a signal for what the voltage is at in one rotation position. See, these are enlarged holes. So if you loosen these, you can rotate the, the TPS just a little bit. And there's just a flat blade in there off the carburetor showing what the throttle position is at. And this just allows for a little better emissions, a little bit more crisp timing. It, uh, it overall helps the bike run a little better. A lot of people claim you can unplug it and it runs just fine. Uh, it really is, if you've got good quality fuel, you're probably not gonna notice the difference, truthfully. But nonetheless, we have it, so we're gonna go ahead and use it. I have adjusted it. The way you do that is you loosen this and you use a, a multimeter tool on the wires and uh, you can look up instructions online, but essentially you're measuring the difference in, in change in voltage from one pair of wires to the other one when the throttle is closed, the other is when the throttle is fully open. And as long as the change is a certain amount, you have it set appropriately. And it, you know, you make tiny little adjustments on it. You tighten those down, check it a couple more times, make sure they're tight, check it again, you're good to go. You rarely have to adjust these. This is the fuel barb, which is where fuel is allowed into the float bowl of the carburetor. This is your, your drain screw, which has a, a small tap off the bottom that the fuel will dump down right nicely onto the uh, transmission casing. And this is your idle adjustment screw. It actually doesn't adjust the throttle plate like some style carburetors. It adjusts the um, throttle cables so that they're resting on a, a certain position, uh, preventing, you know, essentially holding the throttle always slightly open. You can still adjust free play slack on your throttle cables with this, so this works very nicely. And that's about all there is to it. Oh, and of course the uh, fuel enricher screw is really, really hard to see. Let me. There's this, which is one of the float ball screws. There is this, which is a recessed area on the bottom of the carburetor. And this is normally a, uh, a vacuum line coming off, but it's been plugged on this carburetor. But this recessed area has a flat bladed screw uh, very, very small, and that is the fuel enricher screw. It is not an air fuel ratio screw. Okay, it's not an air screw, it's a fuel screw. Here's the key difference. A air screw is something you have on the side of the carburetor, looks like this. It's gonna be usually up here on the side of the carburetor on the intake side, over where the air comes in. And that's to choke down or allow more, more uh, air to enter on a two-stroke. Typically, as you open the air screw, the bike gets more lean. As you close it, you're restricting airflow and the bike gets more rich. That's the way two strokes are adjusted. This, being a four stroke, has a fuel enricher circuit. Just a small, tiny little pinhole right in front of the throttle plate always allows fuel out. Now, it makes the primary difference at idle, you know, right off of idle, but once you're about eighth throttle or more, it plays almost no difference. I mean, it still has an effect, but it's, it's very minuscule in comparison. So you're primarily focusing on getting a good idle out of it and a good throttle response to slight off idle. Uh, and that's really the primary function of that. Having the right idle jet or primary um, does, does help significantly. So this bike has a 22 and a half. I, and one way we need to fix it is we're gonna go up to a 25. And the jets are inside the float bowl, which is easy enough to get to if you take the carburetor off. Uh, but in this case, we don't need to for, for the testing for just the screw or the, uh, the needle here. So we're gonna adjust this needle. We're gonna put the diaphragm back in. We're gonna put the cover on top. Make sure, see this little nub here? Make sure to orient that. There's, there's uh, a couple of little pins sticking up and there's this hole and that hole is an air return hole up here. And there's a, a O-ring that should be there. Make sure it's not missing. So be very careful not to misalign that or move that out of place. It, if it's been installed for a while, it'll probably stay in pretty well. But make sure that's still there when you put it back. Make sure the diaphragm sits neatly into the, uh, into the ridges here. And, uh, and then put the cap back on, secure it. Uh, the other issue is a lot of people have issues with an erratic idle. On a, on a bike and you know it's often misdiagnosed as being 
you know, a vacuum leak, which can be true. Sometimes you have a vacuum hose that's, you know, not not connected to anything when it should be. In this case, they've been plugged on this bike for, for the parts that have been removed, so that's fine. But other people sometimes have a vacuum leak. And then there's other issues where sometimes you have a very small leak, and it's still referred to as a vacuum leak, but these rubber, uh, you know, these rubber cones here, this one connects the carburetor to the engine. There's another one back here for, for this rubber um, air, uh, I don't even know what to call it, air snorkel. And then there's the air box. If these don't seal very tightly, air leaks in and becomes turbulent and doesn't flow very well through the carburetor. Uh, also, if you take this off and this off and you put on like a little pod filter here, very often with carburetors, that's a bad idea. They might flow okay, you might get the jetting okay, but the, those things usually only work at very high RPM, high vacuum engines, like on a sport bike. On something like a thumper, you know, you're gonna have so many issues with that because the airflow is turbulent going to the carburetor and carburetors are designed to operate on what's referred to as laminar flow, very smooth airflow going in. Because we're talking about, if you, if you think about it, air passes over a hole and that sucks fuel out of it. So if you get turbulent air swashing around in there, well, then you're not gonna get the right amount of fuel to come out. So you might have the right jet settings, but if you've got an improper filter set up or you got air leaking through one of those, you can have bad jetting, even if the right jet's on the carburetor.